Throughout the course of evolution, desert mammals have developed many different adaptations for surviving the harsh conditions of the Sonoran Desert. Most desert mammals found in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve are nocturnal, night active, or crepuscular, active at dawn and dusk. During these time periods, typically, the temperatures are cooler and the humidity higher. Avoiding the intense heat and sunlight is one of the more common ways mammals conserve water. Water is essential for all living things. In mammals, the body uses water to transport nutrients, to perform chemical reactions, and to dilute and remove waste. Water is also necessary to cool the body and, in females, to produce milk. An animal must be able to balance the amount of water that it takes in with the amount of water it uses. Unfortunately, that's not always easily accomplished in a place that receives little rain, has a high evaporation rate, and has extremely high temperatures in summer. So how do mammals get water in such a dry environment as a Sonoran desert? One source of water is free water. Coyotes, mountain lions, and most large mammals will drink water every day from water holes, man-made tanks, or temporary pools of water. In fact, their home ranges revolve around water holes. When there is no surface water available, coyotes may dig wells as deep as three feet to reach moisture. Many mammals get the water they need from the food they eat, like wolfberries, prickly pear fruit, prey animals, and insect. However, many of these animals will drink if surface water is available. There are even a few desert animals, like the kangaroo rat, that rely heavily on the water they get as a byproduct of metabolizing their food. Currently, 25 mammals have been documented in the preserve. This next section of this video highlights interesting and unique features of some of these important desert dwellers. About an hour after sunset, the Townsend's big-eared bat leaves its daytime roost. This bat specializes in feeding on moths and other nocturnal insects. An agile flyer with a 12-inch wingspan, the Townsend's big-eared bat captures prey and flight using echolocation. During echolocation, the bat emits ultrasonic sounds with its mouth and listens with its ears for the echoes that bounce off objects. Bats can determine size, shape, and even texture of their prey from echolocation. Additionally, this bat's ears measure one inch long, pretty big for a tiny animal. When laid back, the ears extend to the middle of the body. While roosting or hibernating, the ears are often rolled up, resembling ram's horns. At night, the desert pocket mouse hunts along the ground in washes and open areas in search of its primary food, the seeds of mesquite, creosote, and grasses. After filling its fur-lined cheek pouches, the small rodent carries the seed back to its underground burrow. Once inside, the pocket mouse plugs the entrance to keep the humidity of its burrow higher than the drier desert air outside. Most desert pocket mice never drink free water. Instead, they rely on the metabolic water produced in their cells from seeds and the occasional insect meal for the moisture they need. The large eyes and ears of the white-throated wood rat are an indication of its nocturnal behavior. Known as a pack rat, this rodent gets much of the water it needs from the food it eats. Its diet includes prickly pear cactus, seeds, and leaves. The typical pack rat home in the preserve is a mound covered with vegetation, especially fresh 
teddy bear choya sections and located under a prickly pear cactus or a palo verde tree. Several entrances tunnels down to sleeping, nesting, and waste chambers. A single pack rat lives in this home unless it's a female with young. Despite the intense heat of the desert, you will often see the Harris's antelope squirrel rushing about in the middle of the day, gathering food like the fruit and seeds of cacti, mesquite beans, or insects. To shade itself, the squirrel holds its bushy black tail over its back like an umbrella. When its body temperature reaches its upper limit, the antelope squirrel will move to a cool shady spot. By lying on its belly spread eagle style on cooler ground, the Harris's antelope squirrel can drop its body temperature more than one degree per minute in a process known as heat dumping. During the heat of the day, the desert cottontail rabbit and the black-tailed jackrabbit will rest in shallow depressions in the ground called forms in the shade of taller desert vegetation. The cottontail may also take refuge in the burrows of other desert animals. Not only is this small mammal one of the most commonly seen along the preserved trails, it's one of the most common prey species. To compensate for their high mortality rate, cottontail rabbits breed like, well, rabbits. They begin breeding at three months old and have multiple litters per year. The two to four young are altricial, meaning they are born naked, blind, and helpless. The desert cottontail does have a few good defenses. It has good eyesight, can flee an area quickly, and has good hearing. In fact, its ears are larger than other North American cottontail species. But it's the long ears of the jackrabbit that really stand out. You can see the numerous blood vessels through the large area of thin skin of their ears. By dilating these blood vessels during high temperatures, heat escapes from their bodies and into the air allowing black-tailed jackrabbits to cool down. Those big ears also listen for danger. To escape predators, the jackrabbit is capable of reaching 40 miles per hour, running in a zigzag pattern and springing away in 15-foot leaps. With eyes that are set on the side and high on its flat head, they have almost a 360-degree view of the world around them. The jackrabbit, which is actually a hare, has young that are precocial or independent at birth. They are born with fur, their eyes open, and able to move around in just a few hours. Young rabbits and hares are easy prey for predators like the highly adaptable coyote. This canine lives almost everywhere and eats nearly everything, including plants, insects, and roadkill. They are successful in living in the desert because they have excellent vision, acute hearing, and a sensitive sense of smell. They also use a variety of hunting techniques. They will stalk and pounce on grasshoppers, dig into burrows for ground squirrels, and chase after mice. Coyotes will even work in packs to take down deer. Coyotes are mostly social animals that live in small family groups. They communicate with body signals, scent, and many combinations of vocalizations, including barks, yips, and howls. Mule deer also live in small groups or herds. One reason for this is protection. Together they use their good eyesight, sense of smell, and hearing to stay aware of their surroundings. Mule deer have nine inch long ears that move constantly, independently, and in any direction without moving their head. Their brownish gray coat aids in camouflaging the animals. With their sturdy legs and hooves, 
they can run up to 35 miles per hour and jump as far as 25 feet. Another highly social mammal is the javelina, or collared peccary. Groups on average of 8 to 12 individuals roam through their territory, foraging, creating trails, and bedding down as they go. Using the scent gland on the top of their rump, javelina not only mark their territory by rubbing against rocks and trees, but also rub each other for identification so that each herd shares a distinct scent. Hamelina are not pigs, but with their pig-like snouts and their split hooves, they dig up the roots and tubers of plants. They use their tusk-like canine teeth to shred prickly pear pads, spines and all. Seeds, green vegetation, cat claw, acacia, and mesquite beans are also part of the javelina's diet. Probably the only real predator of an adult javelina is our largest feline, the mountain lion. Although within their 25 square mile or so home range, lions prefer deer as their primary prey. These powerful predators are big. They can range from 70 to 145 pounds, and their body length can exceed 7 feet long from the tip of their nose to the end of their 3 foot long black tip tail. That long, heavy tail is important for balance, especially when the cat makes sharp turns as it chases prey. The other wild cat found in the preserve is the smaller bobcat. At an average of 20 pounds, this feline is easily identified by its most distinguishable feature, a short bobbed tail. Bobcats escape the desert heat by resting in dens in rocky areas, low tree branches, or in some other shadowed area. A female with kittens will move about between several different dens. The mountain lion and bobcat both hunt by ambush, first sneaking up close to an unsuspecting animal and waiting motionless before pouncing in a surprise attack. After eating, the mountain lion covers the remains of a kill with scraped up leaves, sticks, and dirt and will return again and again to feed. Since bobcats feed on smaller prey, like rabbits and birds, they don't cache their kills. Both cats are carnivores, fairly secretive and good climbers. Except during the spring mating season, they live solitary lives. As we have seen in this overview, desert-dwelling mammals are diverse and often elusive creatures. They use a variety of behaviors and have interesting physical characteristics that enable them to live in the Sonoran Desert. It's a lucky visitor who gets to see these fascinating wild animals in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve. Mm -hmm.